Welcome back to another Motobob video, and this week Harley announced the rest of their 2022 lineup, including a new model, the Lowrider ST. So in this video, we'll go over the five best new features of this great looking sporty, cruisery, toury thing, as well as the seven other new bikes they added to the lineup. So clearly the best new feature of the Lowrider ST is the engine with the 117 cubic inch version of the Milwaukee 8 V-Twin. You see the Lowrider S, which I guess is the precursor to this bike, was previously available with the 114. The 117 was reserved only for Harley's super premium CVO bikes. But for 2022, they've made it available on a few of the standard models and the result is a decent boost in performance. So the 114 makes 119 pound feet of peak torque at 3000 rpm whereas this will make about five percent more so 125 at three and a half thousand rpm and of course there's more displacement which helps to deliver this increase but also there's a high performance camshaft which is specific to this engine size a forward facing air filter and heavy breather intake which they say helps to boost the mid-range and also a two into one into two shotgun exhaust system which again helps deliver a smooth and broad mid-range now another clear change from the lowrider s is the the frame mounted fairing. It definitely gives the bike a different look, with the VP of design at Harley, Brad Richards, saying it was used to reference the classic FXRT Sport Glides fairing, which was favored by West Coast customizers. He goes on to say that with a dominant central headlamp flanked by side vents, the genetic connection to the original FXRT remains familiar. The sharper creases and revised proportions in the Lowrider ST fairing provide a look that's intended to be modern, athletic, and aerodynamically superior to the FXRT fairing. So yes, it's partly for looks, but it should also help with the long range comfort on this bike and the aerodynamics he spoke about have been developed using CFD or computational fluid dynamics, which is basically a virtual wind tunnel as well as some real world testing. And those split stream vents that you can see in the front, those are practical too, because they help to reduce buffeting at motorway speeds. Now you may also have noticed the side cases, which again, give this low rider a bit more of a distance and touring focus. They look to be almost the exact same cases as you get on the Sport Glide, and I think they suit the shape of this bike quite nicely as well. They use a clamshell design, so they say they're easy to load up, and also that they can be opened by the rider one-handed while seated with a damping mechanism to stop them from slamming open. Combined, they'll hold 53.8 liters, which is about 10 less than the top loading cases on some of their other bikes, but they've intentionally chosen something that sits a little higher because the low rider is more at the performance end of the cruiser spectrum, and so you don't wanna limit lean angle too much. And if you did really want to push it, or if you just prefer the strip back look for shorter rides, there's an internal quick release mechanism so that you can get them off pretty swiftly. Speaking of lean angle, they've also lengthened the shock versus the other soft tail bikes. So 12.7 mil more stroke, 25.4 mil more travel at the rear wheel and 19.5 mil higher at the seat. Not only do they reckon it adds a bit of comfort, but you also get an extra degree of lean angle, which obviously helps with quicker cornering. Thing is though, the previous Lowrider really was true to its name at 690 mil in the seat. Now it's up to 710, which is more in line with some of their other bikes like the Fat Bob. And so it's a Lowrider in name only now. To be honest though, 710 is probably a little easier to get on with and gives you slightly better visibility down the road. And so personally, I think I'd take that extra clearance and comfort. In fact, you get decent 43 mil upside down forks on this bike. So the suspension setup is generally better than your average soft tail. And despite being a bit more stripped back than their proper Taurus, you can still spec it with a couple of extra luxuries. For example, their Rockford Fosgate inner fairing audio kit. And it sounds like it'll be pretty decent. So a 250 watt amp paired with two five and a quarter inch subs and a couple of tweeters. Now there's no big TFT dash on this bike to manage multimedia. So you just pair it with your phone over Bluetooth and then use your favorite music app. And so that rounds off a pretty compelling package. I already really like the Lowrider S and you can see a full video about it, which I've linked to in the description. But yeah, this configuration adds a little more versatility and long distance comfort, which plays well with the 19 liter fuel tank. But at the same time, it still retains a lot of the essence and looks of the S. Speaking of which, that bike got a couple of the tweaks announced. So it gets the 117 engine as well with that extra shove. It also gets the taller rear shock, but the 
big one for me is that they've moved the clocks. You see, it used to be on the tank, which definitely looked cool and gave the cockpit a really clean look. But in reality, it was a bit of a ball lake to keep looking down at the tank every time you wanted to see how fast you were going. This makes total sense. It's much easier located there. And in my opinion, it still looks pretty good. Now, the Lowrider wasn't the only new ST model because both the Road Glide and the Street Glide now get the ST treatment. So they also get the 117 cubic inch engine, as well as a slightly more sporty look with a slimmer front mudguard and either a black or gray paint job with bronze on the wheels and engine. You see, these two are inspired by the king of the baggers racers in the US, and so they get a single seat setup as well, and the slightly smaller side cases than their special equivalents. These look super cool to me. I like the black and bronze finish and the slightly more svelte look, and that extra torque is never gonna be a bad thing. And then we've got the CVOs, so Custom Vehicle Operations, which for the uninitiated is their top spec stuff with the best equipment and extra special finishes. Paintwork is done by Gunslinger Customs, and for 2022, they've really knocked out some incredible looking bikes. So we've got the CVO Street Glide, in either Hightail Yellow Pearl Black Hole with Lightning Silver Two-Tone and Bright Chrome finishes, there's Envious Green with Black Hole Fade and Flame Pattern and Gloss Black finishes, Envious Green, and then Blue Steel Solid Color and Scorched Chrome finishes. Is that a Zoolander reference? perhaps. There's the CVO Road Glide in Wicked Orange Pearl Black Hole with Lightning Silver Two-Tone and Bright Chrome finishes, and also the Envious Green and the Blue Steel. <laughs> Who made these names up? The CVO Road Glide Limited comes in the Wicked Orange as well, or the Hightail Yellow. And the third option is Dante's Red with Dante's Black Sun Glow Fade Flame Pattern and Gloss Black Finishes. <laughs> And then the CVO Tri-Glide, it's got just the Dante's red option, but it's got a chrome finish, not black on the hardware. Some beautiful bikes added to the lineup for this year. And as always, I'd love to know which would be your pick down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.